Hello everyone, welcome to my video on returns to scale. We're messing around with production functions, so what I go over in this lecture would be fine for a micro class or a macro class, or anything else that's interested in firm behavior. Uh, we're going to be fiddling around with the idea today of how big our firms will be, and it's based on, at least in part, based on returns to scale. The idea being, if we have some function, f of l and k, labor and capital, we're interested on if we increase labor and capital by some factor z greater than 1, so multiplying it by 1.1 1 .1 would be a 10% increase, for instance. If we multiply both l and k by z, we're interested in how fast our production increases in response. And we're going to divide our results into three cases. If we increase L and K by Z, and if that result is greater than if we had the same L and K and just multiplied by Z, we're going to have something called increasing returns to scale. Uh, it sounds pretty arbitrary now. I think the example in a minute is going to help. But basically it just means that when you increase your production, output in Sorry, when you increase your inputs to production, your output will increase even faster. Uh, if you increase your labor and capital by a rate of Z and your output increases by Z, there's not really an increase or a decrease. It's just a constant relationship, constant returns to scale. And then the last case, if you increase labor and capital by Z, and the function increases by less than z, well, you've got decreasing returns to scale. Increasing returns to scale usually tends to lead to bigger firms. Uh, decreasing returns to scale tends to lead to smaller firms, stuff like that. So the reason we're doing this video is because I want to show you a couple of examples. Let's do three to start. Let's do f of lk being the square root of lk. We'll figure out which kind that is. Let's do f of lk being just lk. Let's find that yellow get there. And let's do the last one. f of lk being l over k squared. So I want to check and see whether which of these functions falls into which returns to scale category. Let's do blue first. If I want to multiply both inputs by z, that'd be square root of zl times zk is z squared lk in the square root is z square root lk is z f of lk. So f of z l z k equals z f of lk. So that puts this in the constant returns to scale category. Well, let's check green f of z l z k is equal to z l z k which is equal to z squared l k which is z squared f of l k which since I already assumed z is greater than 1 for all of our z's that we're interested in means that this thing is going to be increasing returns to scale. f of z l z k is greater than z f of l k. And so when we increase our inputs, production will increase even faster. Now our last one, you can probably guess which category it's going to fall into, but I'll walk you through it anyway is, let's see, ZL over ZK squared. 
which is ZL over Z squared K squared, which is one over Z times L over K squared, which is one over Z F of LK. is less than Z F of LK, which means decreasing returns to scale. And that actually reminds me, I forgot to write, I'm too lazy to fix the video, sorry guys. This is up here. That doesn't imply increasing returns to scale yet, we need to clarify. That's greater than Z F of LK. And that implies increasing returns to scale. So with blue, it was equal to ZF of LK, constant returns to scale. Green, your result is greater than ZF of LK, so it's increasing returns to scale. With yellow, your result was less than ZF of LK, so decreasing returns to scale. And that's sort of it in a nutshell. Uh, I do want to, let's see. No, I don't want to do that. I do want to do one last example, a generic one, which I may or may not make you deal with. Let's make our production function be a little more general. F of LK is equal to L to the alpha, K to the beta, where alpha and beta are just some random, or not random, just some numbers. Uh, if I want to check f of z l z k, f of z l z k. By the way, this is a Cobb Douglas production function. So I'm about to show you. You will probably see again in some form, and this may be of use to you. It is equal to z l to the alpha times z k to the beta, which is z the alpha plus beta power times L to the alpha K to the beta, which is Z to the alpha plus beta F of LK. And so with our Cobb Douglas production, it just depends. If alpha plus beta are less than one, you can have decreasing returns to scale. If alpha plus beta equals one, you'll have constant returns to scale. And if alpha plus beta is greater than one, you'll have increasing returns to scale. And so now I can plug in any values I want. You'll notice our first two examples with the square root of LK. Well, that would be alpha and beta both equal to 0.5. So alpha plus beta would equal one, constant returns to scale. With our green example, f of lk, uh, you could treat those both as alpha and beta equal to 1. So alpha plus beta is greater than 1, increasing returns to scale. Uh, with our third one, alpha would be 1 and beta would be negative 2. So those things add up to less than 1, you've got decreasing returns to scale. So all three of these examples fit into my Cobb Douglas. And they fit the rule I wrote below. So, I hope this helps. If not, sorry. Good luck anyway. Thanks for watching.